In this lesson, you will learn how to plan and write a narrative story. When we write narrative stories, we start by first figuring out what the prompt is asking. Second, we plan out what you are going to write. Third, you write your story. So let's start by figuring out what our prompt is asking us. The prompt says, we can all remember or imagine a time we had to think fast to solve a problem. Think about or imagine one time you had to think fast to solve a problem. Now write about a time you had to think fast to solve a problem. By looking closely at the last line of that prompt, I can tell that it's a narrative prompt because it's asking me to write about a time. It's asking me to write a story. I can also see the specific topic it's asking me to write about. So now I can see that this prompt is asking me to write a narrative story about a time I had to think fast to solve a problem. Now I'm ready to make a plan. And when I go to make my plan, I need to think about the parts of a good narrative. A good narrative should always have a beginning that introduces the setting, main characters, and the problem. It should also have a middle that has two attempts by the main character to solve the problem that fail. And it should have an end, which includes a third attempt that solves the problem. Now I'm ready to make my plan. To do this, I'm going to separate my paper into three parts to plan my beginning, my middle, and my end. In the beginning, I'm going to jot down CSP for Characters, Setting, Problem. And now I need to think about what story I'm actually going to tell. So for this prompt, I think I'm going to tell the story about a time that my sister and I had to make lunch for our school, but we couldn't do it because they didn't have the stuff we need. So my characters are gonna be me, Libby, my sister, and the cafeteria manager. The setting is gonna be the school cafeteria, and the problem is we're trying to make spaghetti for the school, but there's no ingredients. Now I'm ready to plan out the first attempt that fails. So the first thing we try to do is we try to find the ingredients. Now I have to plan out why that didn't work. Why did that fail? Well, that failed because all we can find is bread and some tomato sauce. Now I need to plan out the second attempt that fails. So the next thing we try to do is, well, we try to make peanut butter and jelly. And that fails because the school isn't allowed to serve it because of allergies. Now I'm ready to plan out my solution, my third attempt that solves the problem. So to solve this problem, we use the bread, tomato sauce, and some cheese to make personal pizzas, and everyone loves them. Now that I have my plan, it's time to write my first paragraph the beginning of my story, which is going to include the characters, the setting, and the problem. Now here's where some writers get into trouble, because when you go to write, start your story, it can be hard to write that first sentence. So here are four ways you could start a story. Four ways to write that first sentence. I could start it with action. I burst into the class and ran to my desk. This was the day I was making lunch for the school. Or I could start it with dialogue. Have a wonderful day at Lakewood Elementary, our principal sang as he signed off on the morning announcements. Or I could start it by talking about the setting. Everyone stopped talking as soon as I walked into the classroom. Finally, I could start it with a sound. Crash! The door to the classroom flew open as I burst into the room. Any of these would work as a good first sentence, but for my story today, I'm going to go with dialogue. So 
So now I'm ready to write my beginning, and I want to make sure as I write that I've included the characters, the setting, and the problem. Have a wonderful day at Lakewood Elementary, our principal sang as he signed off on the morning announcements. And a wonderful lunch, I added, reminding my classmates that today my sister and I would be fixing their lunch because we had won the Chefs for a Day contest. But when we finally walked into the cafeteria to begin making our famous Owen family spaghetti, the cafeteria manager stopped us. The truck that usually delivers our supplies did not arrive today, she explained. What? I moaned. My determined sister placed her hands on her hips, stuck out her chin, and insisted, It's our day to make lunch, and we're going to do it. Libby, how can we fix lunch without the ingredients we ordered? I asked. What can we make? So in my beginning, notice that I've stated what the setting is. I've also made sure to introduce my characters. I've also described what the problem is. Now I'm ready to move on to my second paragraph. My second paragraph is going to be about the first attempt to solve the problem and how it fails. To write my first attempt, I'm going to use a strategy called Typhet to organize it. When I use Typhet, I want to start with a transition. Then it hit me, or I've got it. Next, I want to state what my idea is. So I want to think about how am I going to solve the problem. After I get my idea, I have to have some actions. So what actions take place? And I want about three actions. After I do all these actions, I need to show the failure. Why doesn't this work? Then I need to show my emotion. How do I feel when this fails? And finally, I need to wrap things up with another transition. Something like, I had to think of something else. So here's my first attempt that fails. As I read, I'm going to be checking off my Typhet to make sure I've included all the parts. Don't worry, Lucy. Our spaghetti is a simple recipe. We can be creative. Finding the things we need won't be hard, she said confidently. So while Libby searched for tomato sauce, she sent me to the pantry to find spaghetti and Italian bread. I ran to the pantry, shoved the sliding doors, and scanned the wall of cans and brown boxes in front of me. I couldn't, I couldn't find spaghetti, but I grabbed all the plain white bread I could carry and trudged back to the kitchen. How many boxes of spaghetti did you find? Libby asked. None, I replied. Well, there's not enough tomato sauce here for spaghetti anyway, she moaned. We need a new menu. Help me think of something. Now that I have my first attempt finished, I'm ready to move on to my next. And so here we can see this is my first page of my story. And I have my first paragraph, which is the beginning, with a character setting problem. And I have my second paragraph, which is my first attempt that fails. Now I'm ready to write my second attempt that fails about how we try to make peanut butter and jelly school but, but it doesn't work because the school is not allowed to serve it and once again i'm going to use Thai fet to organize this story well there's always good old pb and j i offered peanut butter and jelly isn't a special meal libby scoffed it's the best we've got for now at least we have the bread i smiled pointing to my large pile of loaves Okay, new plan, she announced. Go beg the cafeteria ladies for all the peanut butter they've got. I'll rummage through the walk-in refrigerator and hunt for grape jelly. Meet me in the kitchen in five minutes. Got it? Run. Yep, I replied, bolting out the door. Unfortunately, there was just one little detail we didn't think about. Peanut allergies. 
schools are not allowed to serve peanut butter. When the cafeteria lady told me, I fizzled like a day-old balloon. What now? I wondered sadly as I ran to tell Libby the bad news. Once I've completed this paragraph, I'm ready to move on and plan the fourth and final paragraph in my story about how we use the bread, tomato sauce, and some cheese to make the personal pizzas, and we solve this problem because everyone loves them. To write this, I can't use Thai Fet because this attempt works, it doesn't fail. So I'm going to use a different strategy to organize my solution called ties. So when I write my solution, I'm going to start with another transition. And I want to be careful at this point because I don't want to use the same transition twice. Next, I'm going to state my idea. How am I going to try to solve the problem? After that, I'm going to include some events actions. What actions take place? And then, I need to show my character's emotion. How do I feel when this actually works? And I need to show the solution. How do I finally solve the problem? So let's look at this in action. Don't be so glum, sis, Libby grinned. I overheard the conversation and have already thought of a new and better idea. We're going to make everybody, everybody's favorite, pizza. We have the bread, we have tomato sauce, and we have grated mozzarella cheese. I could feel my frown flip into a giant grin. You're the best, Libs. I know. Just watch the master chef at work, she winked. Grabbing a slice of bread, slapping it down, and flattening it with a rolling pin. Then she loaded up the small flat square with tomato sauce, topped it with grated cheese, and popped it in the oven. I caught on quickly, and soon we were turning out hundreds. Bon appétit, we shouted to our classmates as they filed through the lunch line. Please enjoy our famous Owen family personal size pizzas. So, to recap my last two paragraphs, I had my third attempt, or my second attempt, that failed, and my third attempt that solved the problem, where I used Thai Fet to show my attempt that failed, and ties to organize my solution. So this is what my story should look like. I have my first page of the story where half the page is the beginning and the second half of the page is my first attempt that fails. Then I have my second page of my story where the half the page is the second attempt that fails and the last half of the page is my solution. When you go to write a narrative, the first thing you need to do is figure out what the prompt is asking you. Next, you need to plan out what you're going to write. Last, you need to write your story. In this lesson, you have learned how to plan and write a narrative story.